I found this old Spirograph set and I had what I thought was a great idea. I decided to experiment a little bit with using watercolor pencils and the Spirograph, which I probably haven't used since I was a kid. I was actually pretty encouraged by this little test that I did on a scrap piece of paper. I thought this has a lot of potential and I think this is where I made my first, I won't call it a mistake, I'll call it a, basically when I should have just kept experimenting, I started trying to make a piece of art. I'll talk about that a little bit later. One good thing was I started using some masking fluid which I'd never used before. That part of this experiment was definitely a success because I figured out uh, how it works, what to do, what not to do, and it was pretty satisfying actually just applying it to the paper. It's kind of a fun little tool. So I remember now how difficult Spirograph is to use. <laughs> it's really fun to play with, but it's actually kind of kind of hard to to keep the gears in track. What I learned about the masking uh, material is, is that you definitely can't uh, scrape over the top of it. Um, I mean, this is not a good combination using plastic gears on top of the masking material just basically removes it so I wasn't able to get as aggressive with the spirograph as I'd like. So I ended up at this point uh, just taking the colored pencils and trying to fill in some of the blank areas and this is where I would say I made my second misstep. I should have continued to apply a lot more color a lot more layers uh, with the colored pencils but in the moment I wasn't really thinking thinking that way the other thing I noticed is that the colors I chose were really bright and colorful and uh, I don't know if, if it was the colors on the box that influenced me or just remembering uh, using Spirograph as a child I think that using much more muted colors and maybe less colors would have made much more interesting experiment. Um, I'm probably going to do this again and make some changes in my approach. Again, it's all just an experiment and playing around. I like to do this from time to time just to kind of push myself and see what interesting things I can discover. So clearly I had abandoned this biograph at this point and I just decided to start goofing around with the colored pencil wet and wet. And I also decided to drop some ink into the puddles that were on the paper and play with that a little bit and uh, that was a pretty neat effect. So I couldn't wait any longer I decided to pull off the masking fluid and see how that stuff worked and it worked really well I could see how this would be a really good tool for watercolor painting for sure. So like I said earlier I got caught up in trying to make a piece of art as opposed to just experimenting and playing with the tools and I had a lot of fun actually adding these borders and playing with different tones and layers of ink and I got off track as far as the original experiment was concerned but I still had an interesting time uh, using tools that I don't really use that often uh, which is just you know India ink and water. And again, I, I got to a point where I was more focused on what this looked like versus what I was learning. And I decided to cover it with casein. You know, I think that from what I know, you can add casein on top of watercolor. You can, it turns out, but then there was this weird effect that happened in the end that you'll see where it looked like the casein actually didn't stick. So the biggest lesson I think I learned in this experiment was that I need to treat it more like an experiment. The next time I do this, I need to stop trying to make a piece of art and just focus on learning a new tool, a new skill, or playing. And I think that's a valuable lesson, actually. So 
Hope you enjoyed this little video. Hope you learned something from it. I hope it encourages you to try something new. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.